All right, today's lesson will be on Unit 1, Lesson F. We'll be multiplying and adding rational numbers. <clears throat> Your objective today will be that you can calculate the sum and product of two rational numbers. Okay, we've heard these words before, so some of the key terms you may want to review your 1D notes. Um, sum, that would be when you're adding numbers together. Some words to look for when you know that you will be adding. Um, some hints could be more than, in addition to, or maybe even increased by. The product, okay, this is when your answer is multiplied, so when you're multiplying two numbers. Um, some key terms for that to look for would be time, twice, um, twice would mean times two, and the difference between twice and squared, that would be when you multiply a number times itself. Um, rational number and irrational number, go ahead and highlight those for you. These were taken right from your 1D notes, so we should be able to identify these now. I just put them on there just as a little reminder. Um, so rational number that can be written as a simple fraction, an irrational number, a number that cannot be written as a fraction. So these are some things that we will be going over as we go through the notes for today. So let's take a look at example one. <clears throat> it says, please use the order of operations to solve. Order of operations. Okay, if we think back, that's going to be when we use that PEMDAS. So if you haven't heard that before, it's P E M D. A, S, and that stands for parentheses, exponent, multiplication, division, adding, and subtracting. So if we look at example one, let's go ahead and change this to multiplication. Okay, so we have 3 plus 18 times 30 divided by 6. So if we went according to PEMDAS, we don't have any parentheses, we don't have any exponents, but we do hit multiplication first. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply 18 and 30, and we'll get 540. Okay, next on our chart here, we would then divide. So I do 540, I'm going to bring down this 6, divided by 6, and you should get 90. Now I still have this 3 that I have to use, so I'm going to take 90. I'm going to add 3. My answer for here will be 93. Right, let's take a look at B, example B. Again, no sets of parentheses, no exponents, but I do have multiplication first, so I'm going to do 19 times 3, and we'll get 57. Then we look after multiplication, we have division, so we're going to divide by 12, bring down our 12. 57 divided by 12, we will get a decimal, we will get 4.8. 7, 5, and that's okay. All right, we have no other multiplication and division in that problem. We have no addition. So then we're going to go ahead and subtract that last number. We're going to subtract 2. So I'm bringing that down. So 4.75 minus 2, I'll be left with 2.75 as my answer. Okay, example C. Again, refer back to PEMDAS. Um, I have parentheses, so inside of here, I want to answer this first. So 4 plus 5 will give me 9. Then I have these brackets around there, so you're still going to want to have to do that right after your parentheses. So I have 9. I'm going to bring down this 3. Okay, so 9 times 3, I'll get 27. And with this 3 on the outside, what it would look like would be like 3 times 27. Okay, so it can be written that same way, and your answer will be 81. Okay, as a reminder, go ahead and skip over those you try problems. Maybe a good idea, you know what, I'm going to take a highlighter. I'm going to highlight right here for you to make sure that you're memorizing that pun does. So please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, whatever you choose to use to remember. All right, example two. This will be multiplying and adding or subtracting fractions. So um, you should know how to do this by finding the common denominator when you're adding or subtracting or multiplying straight across when you're um, just multiplying the fraction. So what I'm going to teach you guys is how to use that new calculator that you have. So go ahead and take that out right now. 
I have my handy calculator off to the side here. All right, so in order to enter these fractions, what you're going to do is you're going to hit second and then alpha. So you have an A up in your screen. After you have that, you're going to hit Y equals. Okay, so your screen should look like mine. After that, you can either hit enter or one because you want this first option here. And you'll show a blinking little box as to where you're going to enter your numbers. So it's careful that you pay attention for right here. Um, so we're going to enter our first fraction, which is two fifths. So I'm going to hit. Oh, hang on, my thing froze. Okay, so I'm going to hit two. And then I'm going to have to arrow down to go below for the denominator. So I'm going to have to hit my five. I need to clear that one. Sorry, I wrote two. Okay, now to get out of the denominator, you need to make sure that you hit the right arrow. So I have two-fifths right now. It should look like mine. Okay, then we're going to hit the multiplication sign. And then we're going to do that process again. So again, second, alpha, y equals, enter there. And we have three-eighths, so we're going to hit. Mine's very sensitive right now, so you should go ahead and enter 3 eighths. I'm going to catch up with you in just a second. Okay, so after you enter that 8, make sure again you arrow over, and then you're going to hit enter. Okay, your answer is in fraction form, so you should have 3 twentieths as your answer. Okay, now we're going to move on to B. We're going to be doing the same process. We're just going to be adding our fractions. So I'm going to go ahead and clear. Now let's go through that again. So second, alpha, y equals, hit enter. 1, down arrow, 2, right, or right arrow. Then you're going to have your addition. Same thing. Second, alpha, y equals, enter, 3, down arrow, 4, right arrow, enter. And you should get 5 fourths for that. Okay, so just a little practice with those new calculators. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put that away now. And we are going to move on. All right, we're going to take a look at exam example three. It says, in class, Mitch says, the product of two, I'm going to have you change this. We're going to make this from rational to irrational. Okay, so the product of two irrational numbers is always irrational. Stephanie disagreed. Who is correct? And justify your answer. Now in class when we said if we have something or an example that can prove that it's wrong, then right away we have our evidence. So let's take a look at some irrational numbers. Some that we've you know used in class before. We could do the square root of 8. This will be my example. And when we multiply that by the square root of 2. So these are both irrational. So, if Mitch is correct, he would say that the, when you multiply two irrational numbers, then the answer is going to be irrational. So, square root of 8 times the square root of 2 is going to give us the square root of 16. Now, we know that the square root of 16 is 4, and that 4 is now a rational number. So, Mitch is actually going to be wrong. Okay? So Stephanie would be correct because she's the one who disagreed. And to justify our answer, well, here's some work. When we take two irrational numbers and we multiply them together, my answer is now rational. Okay? 
You're going to skip down on this last, or you try for the next day. Please make sure that you answer these questions, and we will see you tomorrow in class.